dear students today we'll be starting the module 6 of basics of electrical and electronics engineering so this particular module will be dealing with communication systems that we generally use and some of the concepts that you need to understand regarding the communication systems so in this particular lecture we will be going through the basics of communication systems the block diagram of a communication system types of uh, systems that are available different communication systems then uh, modulation the concept of modulation and different modulation techniques that are used in general communication systems and in the syllabus amplitude modulation and frequency modulation is being specified so we'll be covering up to that so what is basically a communication system that we can think about communication that we talk about refers to the transmission reception and processing of information by electrical means that is we have some information some signal which can be transmitted which can be received and the information has to be processed and it has to be accessed at the end point now different types of communication include radio communication telegraphy cellular communication tv so all this uh, communication need uh, forms um, can be thought about uh, to be included in this types of communication systems now what is a signal any impulse an electrical impulse or electromagnetic wave which travels a distance to convey a message is termed as a signal so so this message hmm, has to uh, carry some information so information is being carried from one point to another point and that electrical impulse of that particular wave is known as a signal so this signal is being um, generated at a source hmm, it is being transmitted through a channel and it is being received at another point okay so the so the source can be an old, uh, audio signal being generated at one point hmm, at the microphone and it is being transferred through a channel so while we are uh, listening to fm stations hmm, we are at this receiving end and the source is the fm station that is that is that the signals are being transmitted and the channel is the hmm, the uh, waves that are hmm, being transmitted or air forms the channel okay air can be considered as a channel for frequency modulation or fm transmission or fm station so source is the fm station channel is the air and receiver is the um, application that we have in mobile hmm, some application which uh, the signal is being received now um, coming to the general block diagram of a communication system you have a source of information transmitter you have a channel receiver then you have the destination and then you have a source of noise also now information source contains the message to be communicated hmm? so that is being generated at the source now the transmitter will be processing the signal which includes amplification to be filtering out some unwanted signals we'll be modulating it we'll see what the modulation is then it will be decoding it hmm? decoding it uh, to some other uh, form from analog to digital form then it will be compressing and reducing the size or something like that okay then you have the channel hmm? which forms the medium of transmission it can be optical fiber cables can be radio waves can be through a radio waves through air anything can be the channel okay now through the channel the signal passes on to the receiver mm-hmm. okay so receiver is a point where your signal is being received okay so there will be some changes that are happening to the signal during transmission process so exactly that particular message may not be transmitted as such there will be some uh, 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 processing of the signal happening at the transmitter so such uh, so everything has to be reversed to obtain the signal back so you have to extract the original message uh, after processing so that is being done at the receiver and at the destination so the information is being received and we are able to hear it we are able to see it hmm? we are able to 
feel the information now you have no source also available so once it is being transmitted along with the channel or at the point of transmission along the transmission you will have some unmanaged signals that are coming into the uh, system or into this transmission process so such unmanaged signals are known as noise signals or noise source so it's, uh, we can infer the unwanted signal in forms of hissing sounds some sounds in your uh, audio signals or flicker in tv mm. so such unwanted signals has to be removed mm. so such uh, noise are removed during your receiving process or at the receiver so this is a general block diagram for a communication system now coming to the modulation now what do you mean by modulation so modulation is being done at the transmitting session so what do you mean by modulation it is a process of changing the parameters of a carrier signal hmm? we'll see what these are a carrier signal in accordance with the instantaneous values of message signal or modulating signal so we have different signals available we already have seen what a signal is so we have three types of signals available a messaging signal or a message signal or a modulating signal then you have a carrier signal and then you have a modulated signal so you have three types of signals available so you are trying to change the parameters of the carrier signal in accordance with the instantaneous values of message signal so message signal contains the information hmm, that needs to be transmitted so the carrier will signal is used to transmit this or uh, helps to transmit this particular message now the message signal or modulating signal carries information it can be comprising of multiple frequencies when we talk an audio signal will be having different frequency components in that okay and uh, the energy levels are very weak very low and they are weak signals and uh, if, you, if you are trying to transmit this message signal as such it can be affected by the noise signals and towards the end we may not be able to extract the information from it so what we do is that we take the help of a carrier signal these are high frequency signals it has certain phase frequency and amplitude and it carries no general information it is just a carrier that's all okay it is can be considered as an empty signal so the carrier signal is transmitted to the receiver after modulation it carries the message signal so it carries the message signal or the modulating signal why do you call it as the modulating signal because you are modulating the carrier based on this message signal so it is known as a modulating signal so the the message is being transmitted to the receiver after modulation and uh, the parameters of the modulating signal is not affected we are not changing any characteristics of the carrier message signal or the modulating signal we are simply changing the parameters of the carrier signal only the modulating signal remains intact or the message remains intact now you have a modulated signal which is a third type of signal which is a resultant signal after modulation so it can be thought of as a combination of modulating signal and a carrier signal so modulating signal is simply the message signal and the carrier signal is a high frequency signal that is used to carry the information so we will uh, take an example here so we have a modulating signal so this is a message to be transmitted okay and you have a carrier here mm. this is of a high frequency a uh, uh, signal so this is high frequency signal this is a low frequency signal and it carries some information now what we do is that uh, this modulated signal will be a combination of these two that is being done so here the frequency is not changing you can see that frequency is remaining same but the amplitude of the carrier signal is being changed mm. in accordance with the amplitude of the this mm. message signal so once the amplitude of the message signal increases the amplitude of the carrier signal also increases okay and the amplitude decreases the amplitude of the carrier signal also decreases so in such a way in this particular example the amplitude of the carrier signal is being changed hmm? so this type of uh, uh, process is known as amplitude modulation that we will see so here amplitude is being changed without changing the frequency so here you can see that we have a carrier signal we have the message signal ultimately we will get a modulated signal which is being transmitted okay and at the receiver we will be extracting this particular information out of it 
so that's end of the communication system process now what is the need for modulation hmm? the first first case is you need to reduce the size of antenna we'll take two examples suppose you have hmm, a frequency a signal of 3 kilohertz frequency hmm? and it will have a wavelength of lambda equal to 100 kilometer and generally uh, you require an, uh, require an antenna size of lambda by 4 which will give you 25 kilometer height for the am- antenna okay suppose i am trying to increase the signal frequency to 100 megahertz now your wavelength will be 3 meter and you require an antenna size of 80 cm so from 25 km we have reduced the size of antenna to comparable to 80 cm so by increasing the frequency so we are trying to transfer the signals as a high frequency signal using a carrier carrier wave so while doing that you are able to reduce the antenna size then you have the option of transmitting hmm, simultaneously hmm, or you have several broadcasting stations transmitting the signals simultaneously at different carrier frequencies see uh, the main uh, example that you can think about is fm so you have fm stations uh, ranging from 90 megahertz to some 108 megahertz you have different stations so within that range you have multiple stations operating which are charge at different frequencies so that is the option that that uh, this particular uh, modulation gives you then it permits multiplexing so you get you can use a same channel hmm? same channel is being used but you can have several signals being transmitted just by varying the frequency see the channel can be thought of as an optical fiber cable so you have an optical fiber cable and you are trying to transmit different signals okay so in doing so we are able to do that see you, are, you have uh, optical fiber cables which will be transmitting uh, tv signals as well as internet hmm, signals using the same cable hmm? so that is an example of it okay when you can, you can reduce the effects of noise and interference which will be which i'll explain in detail later and then you have increased coverage area hmm? Hmm? since a message signal is very weak you may not be able to transfer it to or transmit it to long distances but by by using modulation you can increase the range of communication again wireless communication is another uh, advantage that you have because you are able to transfer from one country to another country using satellite communication mm-hmm. so this modulation helps in doing that now you have different types of modulation available which can be uh, divided into analog modulation and digital modulation and Uh, we are concerned about the amplitude modulation and frequency modulation in this particular lecture okay and uh, this we have already seen the need for modulation okay we have antenna dimension we have noise interference we have channel issues channel characteristics and we have bandwidth so i'll uh, come to this later now analog modulation hmm? now you have two types of analog modulation that we are discussing the first one is amplitude modulation and the other one is noise frequency modulation so in amplitude modulation the amplitude of the carrier wave is varied in accordance with the instantaneous value of the modulating signal and here frequency is remaining constant and in frequency modulation frequency of the carrier wave is varied in accordance with the instantaneous value of the modulating signal and here amplitude is remaining constant so we'll see in detail so in amplitude modulation what happens you have this modulating signal or the message signal and this is a carrier hmm, which is having high frequency now the amplitude of this carrier is being varied in accordance with the amplitude of the modulating wave here once the amplitude of the modulating wave increases the amplitude of the carrier wave increases once the ampli- modulating wave produces its amplitude the ca- carrier wave also reduces the amplitude so we will uh, see one example so here you can see that uh, you have this signal and once the 
amplitude increases the amplitude of the carrier wave increases and the amplitude of the signal decreases the amplitude amplitude of the carrier wave also decreases so this is in the case of amplitude modulation and this second figure this shows the amplitude modulated wave hmm? am wave hmm? modulated signal yeah now now let the modulating signal hmm? modulating or signal hmm? message signal be defined as es in the sign omega st where omega s is the frequency of the modulating signal and the first is the frequency carrier signal is defined as ec is equal to capital ec sin omega ct where fc is the frequency of the carrier signal now the resultant modulation signal can be expressed as eam this can be ec plus es sin omega ct so the resultant modulated signal will be having the frequency omega c same as that of the carrier wave but the amplitude varies the amplitude will be varying in accordance with the amplitude of this hmm, uh, message signal so ec plus instantaneous amplitude gives a net amplitude of the modulated signal so which can be simplified in this form so you will be getting a term ec plus es by ec which is known as modulation index hmm, we will see what it is so once you simplify it you can simplify it we'll be getting these terms ec sin omega ct ma is a modulation ma ec by 2 cos omega ct minus omega s into t minus ma ec by 2 cos omega c plus omega s into t so here you can see three signals one is a carrier wave as such amplitude more this is amplitude modulated wave so the modulated wave will be comprising of three signals three set of signals one is a carrier wave which is at a frequency of omega c and having an amplitude ec then you have a lower side band or which is having a lower frequency at omega c minus omega s hmm? with an amplitude of ma ec by 2 and then you have an upper side band which is having a higher frequency compared to omega c uh, at omega c plus omega s with an amplitude of ma ec by 2 so which, this can be uh, drawn on a frequency spectrum hmm? so here you can see this is this y axis is amplitude x axis is frequency so at omega c we have ec at omega c plus omega c of ma ec by 2 and omega c minus omega c of ma ec by 2 now from this we can arrive at an expression which is known as bandwidth so you must have heard about bandwidth it is the amount of spectrum needed to transmit the signal without excessive distortion so when you have an amplitude modulated signal the frequencies will be extending from this point up to this point you have range of frequencies here this means frequencies are available so this range of frequencies are known as or is known as the bandwidth and what is spectrum spectrum is frequency frequencies available in a signal. Hmm? If you take a particular signal, what are the frequencies that are available in a signal? So, set, set of frequencies are known as spectrum. So, it is amount of frequencies or spectrum required to transmit the signal without excessive distortion. Now, bandwidth can be expressed as a difference between two frequencies, omega c plus omega s minus omega c minus omega s. So, you will be getting the result as 2 omega s. radians per second or 2 fs hertz so in an amplitude modulation the bandwidth of the hmm, modulated signal will be twice the frequency of the message signal or modulating signal in order to uh, transfer the signal satisfactorily hmm, without any distortion now modulation index ma we have already seen so ma is defined as the fraction of carrier amplitude that it varies by so we'll take an example let ma is equal to 0.5 mm. so the carrier amplitude varies by 50 percentage above and below the original value so you have or some original value of original amplitude of the carrier signal so that is being varied by a factor of 50 percentage above and below it mm. that is 1.5 plus or minus 1.5 so here we have some 
So first this is the original amplitude. Okay. So the amplitude is being varied above it, below it. Hmm? So that that fraction is termed as the hmm, modulation index. So this is a carrier frequency. Frequency is not changing. Only the amplitude is being changed. So this particular uh, index is known as modulation index. Now amplitude modulation uh, transmitters are less complex. They are simple hmm, and the amplitude uh, receivers are simple and easy to detect and the signals are easy to detect and they can travel long distances and we have power wastage during amplitude modulation and it gets affected due to noise heavily and it needs a larger bandwidth and uh, the applications include radio broadcasting picture transmission in TV systems now coming to frequency modulation here what happens the frequency of hmm, the carrier signal is being changed in accordance with the amplitude okay so here you have a positive amplitude increasing at b so at the point b at the modulated wave you have higher frequency at the point c you have zero volt so your frequency is normal or compared to the resting frequency resting frequency is the frequency of the carrier wave now at d what happens your amplitude is negative so at d your frequency is reduced so it can be seen from this figure hmm? as the amplitude increases the frequency increases and as the amplitude reduces the frequency reduces so here your amplitude is maximum your frequency is maximum at this point and here your amplitude is minimum frequency is minimum and here your amplitude is zero you will have a normal frequency of the carrier wave so and that as that frequency increases the time period also reduces so here you can see that the frequency is varied in fm in accordance with the amplitude as amplitude um, reduces the frequency also reduces as amplitude increases frequency also increases now we will have a term which is known as frequency deviation in fm it is amount of amount by which the carrier frequency is varied from the unmodulated wave hmm? unmodulated uh, value of the frequency that is you have an unmodulated frequency which is known as fc hmm? that we have seen fc is the resting frequency or f0 f0 is the resting frequency of the unmodulated wave hmm? so amount by which the carrier frequency is varied due to the message signal that particular factor is known as frequency deviation and this frequency deviation delta is proportional to instantaneous voltage of the modulating signal or the message signal that you have seen and uh, ES is the message signal EC is the carrier signal the instantaneous frequency of the FM signal can be expressed as FI which is the instantaneous frequency which is given by FC plus hmm, KF ES sin omega ST and this particular term is known as frequency deviation delta okay uh, this this is a k is a constant if f is the this this k and f are constants okay and uh, es is the um, amplitude of this signal wave and omega st is the frequency omega s is the frequency of this signal wave and k into f into es gives delta which is the frequency deviation okay now the minimum frequency of modulated wave is given by fc minus delta fc is the carrier frequency or f0 0 minus delta and the maximum frequency is given by fc plus delta and the bandwidth can be mm, expressed using Carl's, carson's rule which is given by 2 into delta max which is a maximum frequency deviation plus f max which is a maximum uh, value of f delta max plus f max f max this f max okay so um, um, bandwidth can be calculated using this particular formula now some of the advantages of fm is improved noise immunity hmm? we have rendered transmitted signal useful and it covers larger area with the same transmitted power 
it is very powerful when compared to AM because FM is more clear you can think about FM when compared to AM mm? clarity of FM is more than compared to AM so with minimum power it can transform tra- uh, tra- trans- transmit the po- uh, signal to larger area and uh, transmitter the power is remaining constant you are not having any variation in the power that is being transmitted and it also has large bandwidth requirement and uh, they are very complex in nature transmitters and receivers and applications include FM radio broadcasting, sound uh, broadcasting and TV, satellite communication. Now in general comparison between FM and AM, amplitude of FM wave remains constant which is independent of depth of modulation. We have no variation in amplitude of FM wave. Okay. And the uh, entire transmitted power is useful in, in the case of FM. And uh, why do you say that FM has better noise immunity? That is because FM use, uses very high frequency and ultra high frequency ranges whereas AM uses medium frequency and high frequency ranges. So you have low uh, noise in this frequency range, ultra high frequency and very high frequency range. Then you have amplitude limiters in the FM receivers to remove the noise. And then you have guard band available between channels to reduce co-channel interference. That is you have multiple channels. Uh, uh, shared mm, among the uh, same bandwidth or same spectrum so you will have a guard band some frequency range available between the channels to reduce channel to channel interference then drawbacks of FM compared to AM mm, um, this FM has infinite side bands you must be remem- remembering that uh, AM has a fixed bandwidth mm, that is 2 into uh, F S but in FM there is no fixed bandwidth, it has infinite side bands. So large bandwidth requirement is there when compared to AM. And uh, FM transmitters and receivers are complex when compared to AM. And uh, in FM reception is limited to line of sight. Mm-hmm. The range is very small when compared to AM. Mm-hmm. AM has large range of transmission. So, thank you.